Hi everybody, I'm going to walk you through how to create your own version of the Everstorm project to move the Everstorm around and shoot it at the uh, in the same program because out of the box they don't have that available. So I'm going to show you how to use two channels to control the robot. So I'm going to launch the home edition of the Lego Mindstorm EV3 programming tool. Once you launch it, what you're going to do is open the project that controls building the Everstorm. This is it right here. So if I click on Everstorm, you can see that there's a build and program mode here. So if I click on build and program, I'm going to assume that you've already used this program and that you know how to build uh, what I am going to show you how to do is take program or mission 5 and convert that into a uh, program that you can then control the robots with two uh, channels on your IR. So what I'm going to do first is click on project 5, mission 5, and it's going to launch. Now click on the command button to go directly to the programming mode. And if you click on the finish program, you will see, I'm just going to close this window by clicking on the content editor. Um, what you'll see is I'm just going to minimize this a little bit and so we can see both programs. Now what the Mission 5 out of the box does is that this is a continuous loop in a block to infinity that, sorry, that calls a block called IR control. And if we take a look at IR control, quickly you'll see that there's a switch here that has a bunch of tabs that determine what happens when a certain button on the remote or the infrared uh, beacon which acts as remote is pressed as you can see here this is the default mode uh, nothing is pressed so the, ro the robot will do nothing then you can see that there's the top left uh, which will, if I click on that, top left makes it turn um, to the left. Then there's the bottom left, top right, etc. So it goes along here. These two here makes the robot go forward. And if you see the two back, it makes the robot go backwards. And there is, this is a fairly complex program. We're not really going to change this because this works exactly the way it's supposed to. As you can see here, um, this, this, uh, that controls the switch here. This program takes a look at the infrared sensor and measures the remote on channel one. And that's what's happening on channel one. As these button, buttons are pressed, the activities within the buttons um, kind of switch logic are executed. What I am going to do now is I'm going to leave Everstorm Pro, uh, Mission 5 open. I'm going to close the overall Everstorm project and I'm going to click on this plus to add a new project. Okay. Now this new project, just at you, as you create it, save it as something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it in my Everstorm directory and I'm going to call this JJ, which are my first initials, dash F3RSTORM. So now what I've done is I've taken the out-of-the-box project and loaded it up in here as Everstorm 05. So that's back in the original project. You can see the, the program is still here. And now I can switch to my JJ Everstorm. What I am going to do now is I'm going to double-click on the word program, and we're going to call this IR with shoot. So that means that we're going to be able to shoot and move at the same time. Okay, I'm going to close this on the right-hand side to get rid of that pane. And now what you do is you go back to the Everstorm project because what I want to do is I want to copy this program and put it into my own project. And then I'm going to alter it and show you how to fix this so that both remote modes work on the Everstorm. Again, go back to this little... Uh, wrench which is the project properties and in project properties mode you'll see that there's a list of tabs here that allow you to, vi to view certain things within this project what I am what I am interested in doing is highlighting Everstorm 3 
5, Mission 5, and clicking on Copy. Now what that's going to do is that's going to copy the entire program into the clipboard, and then I switch to the JJ Everstorm, You're, and what you do is you go to the tools on this one too, the project properties, and as you can see, the IR shoot EVP, EV3P program has already been defined as sitting in there. Now what I want to do is I want to paste from the clipboard into this project. And as you can see, it brought in the Everstorm 5 code. You can also see here that it brings in the images and the sounds and the blocks that are used by that program. So now I can close Everstorm 5 because I don't need it anymore. And I can work within the JJ Everstorm 3. Uh, just a couple little tips as I go. If I see something I want to tell you, I'll, I'll let you know. This star means that there's uh, changes to the project that haven't been saved. So I'm just going to go up here and do a, do a save. Okay. You can see the star went away. Now what we want to do is we want to proceed to the Iowa Shoot program. As you notice, it's empty. So what we want to do is we're going to go back and open up the program Everstorm 5. Okay, double click on that. Now Everstorm 5 is open. What we are going to do is copy the first block. I call it a block actually. It's the first uh, program. We're going we're gonna to do a copy of that and I'm going to show you everything by using the mouse and the menu system. So I did an edit copy. Now I switch over to IR with shoot and I do an edit paste. Now what happened is it's moved the IR control program into my IR with shoot program. I'm going to delete that extra play and I'm going to select this and just kind of, whoops, sorry, I'm just going to move it. Move it up here so I've got room for the other block that I'm going to bring in. Now I say block, I should be careful. It's not really a block. It's another uh, it's another program with a start. So what's going to happen is this start button means that when the robot starts up with this program loaded, it will execute for infinity this IR control, which will sit and wait for you to push something on the IR control in uh, on channel one to move the robot around. Now what we want to do is we want to build another program that will run continuously that will monitor IR channel 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Everstorm 5 and I'm going to highlight and select the entire second program that runs. As you notice on the out-of-the-box mode what you have to do in order to make the uh, Everstorm shoot is that it waits for the touch sensor to be pressed and once you touch the set once you press the touch sensor then the switch is executed to determine whether or not the ambient light is high or low, meaning that if the light is uh, less than uh, the threshold value, meaning the light has been covered or the ambient light is darker, then it's going to execute the shooting up. Okay, The robot says up and then it shoots up. If you push the touch sensor and the ambient light is greater than 26 to 25 actually, greater than 25, greater than or equal to 25 it's going to shoot down and what we want to do is we want to take advantage of this so again this has all been highlighted I'm going to use this as my starting point to create the IR2 program so what I'm going to do is go to edit and I'm going to copy that okay now I'm going to go to IR, IR shoot and I'm going to click on the window somewhere I'm going to say edit and I'm going to paste okay so now let me just slide over a little bit so we can see. Now what you'll see is that we have a second program in here. Now I'm just going to try and drag it over a bit so they're both visible. Now what I have now is the starting of the second program that because it has a start block, it will run at the same time as the other IR control that's on the left that's not visible right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through quickly how to quickly alter this so that you can then control with channel 2 the robot so what I'm gonna do first of all is this this target it's just kinda of showing on the screen uh, a target uh, like a bullet that says that the robot is in target mode 
I'm actually going to get rid of that. That's not really needed. Um, whoops, sorry about that. I just deleted the whole thing. I did a control Z to undo that. I'm going to highlight target, delete target. Okay. Now this weight block is actually waiting for the touch sensor to be touched. I'm just going to get rid of that. It's not needed. Now what's happening is we're thinning this out so that we can change. This is going to be a switch that we want to compare to channel two on the IR sensor. So what you do is you change the, because right now this is monitoring the infrared sensor. Sorry, this is monitoring the uh, color sensor. So what we want to do is we want to change it to the infrared sensor. Now what we want to do is we want to select infrared sensor measure remote. Okay, that's what is used to determine what's being pushed on the remote. So click on that, and as you can see, this switch is now turned to a mode of the remote. The first thing that we want to do is notice that there's only two cases here. There's the case where the top left button is pressed, and there's the case where no button is pressed. What I want to do is add another switch, because what we need is we need three cases. We need one case where nothing is pressed. We need another case where the top left is pressed, and we need another case where the bottom left is pressed, because the bottom, the bottom left is going to shoot down. The bottom, sorry, the top right is going to shoot up, and pressing nothing will obviously do nothing. So what I want to do is make sure that you change this, for instance, to channel two. Because right now, channel one is already being used by the IR control. As a matter of fact, I think I'll just open that up now and show you. So the IR control, as you can see, is a block that has a bunch of switches that control what is done if it's top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right, the top two, the opposites, opposites, and the bottom two. Those all have cases that are executed when those buttons are pressed. And as you can see, the IR control, for instance, when you push both up, it will just run the skate program, which means go forward with both wheels and with both tracks in motion. If you look at the bottom, it's the same thing. It's going to go backwards in a negative value because it's going to send skate a parameter that's negative and skate's going to go backwards using that parameter. If you take a look at this one, for instance, this turns both motors so that the robot turns in place and it turns to the left. Okay, so now let's just close our control. Now you've seen that. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add a switch that's going to be our default switch that will do nothing. So you can see here it's because a case hasn't been selected. So if I select on default case, that's what that dot's for. And now I'm going to select on the question mark and I'm going to say if nothing is selected, then do nothing. And that's the default case. So as this loop is continuously executed, it will fall in the default case, which is to do nothing. Now what we want to do is we want to control what happens when the top left button is pressed. Now don't forget, one thing I didn't do was I you have to change it to channel two. So once this is changed to channel two, now what's gonna happen is the robot will monitor channel two until a button is pressed. Now, do not click on default case. That's the one down here that does nothing. And here the top left is the robot's gonna say up and it's gonna shoot up. Now what we wanna do is we want to alter this case to select the bottom left now when the bottom left is done he will shoot down he will say the word down and then shoot down so that is all that you have to do in order to allow the robot to be controlled with the ir in both the skate mode which means to move around and in the shoot mode so let me just show you Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, okay? And now I'm going to connect to my brick. I have a Wi-Fi dongle in my um, robot, so that makes it really handy. I don't have to use cables. You can actually buy the world's smallest dongle, they call it. It's an Edimax dongle. I think I paid 11 bucks on Amazon, and uh, that's excellent. So what I'm going to do is just go back to my brick program. What I've clicked on is the uh, brick information. And what I can do in the brick is I can clean it up by clicking on this file manager. And what it does is it brings up all these different programs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up the, uh, the robot. And I'm going to close that up. And then what I'm going to do is download 
the program. You're not going to be able to see this, but I just want to download to verify it works. And then once I verify it works, I'm going to show you um, a video that de demonstrates how it works when uh, when you reprogram it this way. So again, just to qu quickly summarize before I pop out, we've left the IR control block alone because that works excellently. But uh, uh, the, the, what it does do, though, is it uses all of the buttons up in... Um, on channel one. So if I could have found some free buttons in channel one, I could have just added a case in here that would have allowed me to control the shooting. But because all the buttons are used up, that's why you want to program it to, to measure uh, number two. So uh, number two is actually uh, pulling down slightly on the red button in case you don't know that. So on the, on the infrared beacon in the top, when the little red sliding button between the two bottom buttons is pushed all the way up, that's channel uh, one. And when you push it, when you, sorry, when you pull it down just slightly, that's going to be channel two. Uh, pull it down slightly more is channel three, and all the way to the bottom is channel four. So there is different modes, and that's what this is meant for, is so that you can change different frequencies and still control the robot through the IR beacon. So without any further ado, what I'm going to do is download the program. There, you just heard my robot agree that it's received the program. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute it just to make sure that this works before I show you the demo. So IR with shoot. I'm running it. I'm just going to put my robot down, try the beacon, goes back, goes forward, go forward, switch down to channel two, push up. He says up, up. Okay, so now I know that this program works. Now I'm going to switch out to a video and show you that. So just bear with me one second and I'll give you a little demo on how this works. There we go. Let's take a look at this video right here. Okay, hi everyone. I'm just going to give you a brief demo on how this thing works. Uh, now that we've got channel one and channel two programmed to allow to, uh, us to operate this robot, uh, I'm going to go backwards a little bit to make sure that the robot is in the middle of the frame. Uh, I, I am just going to give a brief demo. Usually I don't like to shoot the balls because they go all over the place, but for you guys I will spend the next hour after this demo trying to find these dang things. Uh, again, so we're in channel one. Uh, it can go forwards, it can go backwards, it can turn in place, turn in place, go a little bit forwards. I'm going to try and turn a little bit sideways so that you can see how he shoots, okay? So again, a little bit back. I'm on the end of, edge of a table, so I have to be careful here. But as you can see, I can go forward, no problem, in channel one, backwards. Turn him a little bit sideways, come a little bit forward so he's in the middle of the screen. Now I'll switch to channel two, and I'll push the top left so he shoots up. There, he just shot up. Up again. Now what I can do is I can push the bottom left and he'll shoot down. There you go. Now, back to channel one. Move back, forward, around. Say hello to the camera, and that's the end of the demo. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.